In this video I will explain to you how you can derive the current divider rule from voltage equality in a parallel circuit and how you can use this rule to calculate partial currents. And I will also demonstrate in an experiment how the current divider can be used in practice to make very accurate current measurements for small resistors. My name is Andreas from the Fearless Engineer and here we go. Now in the last video on Kirchhoff's first law we have already looked at how to combine resistors which are connected in parallel to each other using both the node rule and Ohm's law. And now we want to calculate the partial currents which are running through the individual branches of a network and for this purpose we can also use two laws again which are Ohm's law and the voltage equality rule which holds for parallel resistors. And if you're not sure why the voltage drop across parallel components in a circuit is identical then you should watch my last video about this topic which contains both a theoretical explanation and an experiment. And the link is coming up for you now. Now let's start with the derivation which is really fast in this case here. And the assumption is this, we have two resistors which are arranged in parallel to each other powered by a voltage source. And in the simulation here you can easily see that the right resistor has to be larger than the left one because much less current flows through its branch. And also the voltage drop across R1 and R2 is identical to the source voltage which is at 5 volts in this case. And now we use exactly this equality to calculate the partial currents. And for this purpose we first write down the voltage equality as an equation which looks like this. We simply write voltage total equals voltage at resistor number one equals voltage at resistor number two. And the question of how to continue from here onwards depends on the values which are given to you in the respective task you want to solve. Now let's first assume that we know the overall current I total and we also know R1 and R2 and that we are looking for the partial current I1. And in this case we set the total voltage equal to um, voltage out across the res resistor number one and replace the voltages with current and resistance using Ohm's law. That means R total times I total equals R1 times I1. And the only quantity from the equation which has not been provided to us is R total. But this is not a problem here because we already know from the video on Kirchhoff's first law that the total resistance of two resistors connected in parallel can be calculated as R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. And if we now use this expression for R total and also divide by R1 on both sides of the equation, we get the expression which looks like I1 equals I total times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 for the first partial current. And this is already the first version of the current divider rule. And if we look for the partial current I2 instead, we simply have to replace I1 by I2 and R2 in the numerator by R1 so that I2 equals I total times R1 divided by R1 plus R2. And in the second version of the current divider, we assume that we know the partial current I2 and also both resistors and that we want to find out the partial current I1. And this can also be done using the voltage equality again. So we equate U1 with U2 and use Ohm's law to get the form R1 times I1 equals R2 times I2. And this can be transformed very easily to I1 equals R2 divided by R1 times I2, which is already the second form of the current divider. And now that we have derived the formulas, the question arises what we can do with the current divider in practice. And to answer this question, we are now going to conduct a small experiment. And first we set a voltage source to 5 volts and connect it to a 100 ohm resistor via a few wires and also some crocodile clips. This is a simple unbranched circuit which currently consists of only a single source, a red and a black supply cable back and forth from the source, the actual resistor, two blue connecting cables and the small white breadboard here to keep the resistor in an upright position. And our task will be to measure the current through the resistor with an amp meter, but before we do that I would like to calculate the amount of current that is to be expected in this experiment. And we can easily calculate this with Ohm's law, but especially with smaller resistances it's also important to take the resistance of all the wires and cables and connectors into account as well. And also the resistance has a production related deviation of its theoretical value which we cannot determine from the color code alone, which is given by the tolerance, but we do not know for a single resistor which we pick from the batch which deviation it actually really has in practice. And this is why we now perform a quick resistance measurement with a multimeter before measuring the current which includes all the components which we find in the circuit. And by the way I have already made a video on how to measure resistors correctly and if you don't know this video yet the link is coming up for you up here now. And the important thing is that we avoid measuring the voltage source. So we pull out the cables from the source input and also the output and connect them to the multimeters measuring tips instead. First the red one and then the black one. 
And on the display, we can now read a value of 101.6 ohms, which is the value for all the components in the circuit, that is wires, crocodile clips, breadboard connectors, and also, of course, the actual, the actual resistor. And now we can easily calculate the current which is running through the circuit using Ohm's law, which is uh, given by 5 volts divided by 101.6 ohms, which gives us a current which we expect in the measurement of 49 milliamps. And now we want to actually measure the current and therefore we install the meter in the circuit directly behind the resistor. And in order to do this, we remove the black crocodile clip, we connect the yellow terminal of the meter to the blue cable leading to the resistor and then connect the second yellow terminal to the free black crocodile clip. And now we have installed the meter directly into the circuit, which means that the complete current flows first through the resistor and then through the ammeter. And now we switch on the source and take a look at the current which is being measured. And interestingly, while the order of magnitude is correct here, there is a discrepancy we need to look into. And the current increases slightly during the measurement and reaches a value of 47.02 milliamps at the end. And this is close to the expected value of 49 milliamps, but it's not identical. And the deviation if you actually computed is around 4%, which is quite a lot. And the question now is, how can this deviation be explained? And you might want to pause the video now and think about potential reasons for this 4% decrease in the, in the current measurement. So, see you soon in a few seconds. And here comes the answer. Now the reason for the deviation which we just saw is the internal resistance of a current meter. If we insert the meter into the circuit, then the complete current flows through it. And since we don't have such a thing as a perfect meter, of course, we have a resistance of the test leads, of the tips, of the pressure which you use. We have the cables, we have all the components inside the meter. And all these components increase the actual overall resistance which we have in the circuit. And the increase in overall resistance means a decrease in overall current, which is just what we have observed now. Okay, so now we know the problem and with a simple trick and also the formula for the current divider, we can construct a solution here. And this is how it works. Now the reason for the deviation which we saw in the measurement is the comparatively large internal resistance of the meter. So in order to solve the problem, we simply have to take the amp meter out of the main circuit and put in a resistor with a very small value in its place. And now after having first connected the black cable leading to the power source and one of the meter connectors at the lower end, we do the same at the upper end with a blue cable leading to the resistor and with a second connector of the meter. And now the new resistor is connected in series with the old one and the current meter is connected in parallel to it. We'll take a closer look at the circuit diagram in a few seconds, but before we do this, let's talk about this resistor here. This is a so-called wire resistor, which has a value of only one ohm and it's also very, very accurate and it may become very hot without breaking. That's why it has all these cooling fins here. We don't need that, that heat resistor, resistivity here in this experiment, but it's uh, the very small value in combination with the high accuracy we are after. And this is the reason why I've selected this resistor type for the upcoming experiment. And when we now switch on the voltage source, we measure a current of 6.96 milliamps, which are flowing through the meter, which is much less than the 49 milliamps, which we expected. But by using the current divider rule, we can very quickly arrive at the correct result in a few simple steps. But before we start with the equations, let's have a quick look at the simulation to see what's actually happening here. On the left, you can see the original circuit with a current of 49.07 milliamps flowing through the resistor. And in the right circuit, the amp meter, including the internal resistance, have been installed and the current drops as observed in the experiment as well, with the error being caused by the internal resistance of the meter. In the next circuit, the 1 ohm resistor is then built directly into the main circuit with the current meter connected to it in parallel. As you can see, the total current of almost 49 milliamps is much closer to the theoretical value which we anticipate. And the reason for this is, of course, the very small wire resistance in the main circuit, which impedes the flow of the electrons much less than the amp meter did originally. And the yellow dots here simulate the amount of current, and you can clearly see that only a small portion of the current flows through the meter. And just like in the experiment, the simulation arrives at a value of just under 7 milliamps for the meter branch here. And the last step is to use the current divider to calculate the total current from the measured partial current, which is running through the meter. We have already derived the equation for this, which is I measured the current running through the meter equals I total times R2 divided by the internal resistance of the meter Rm plus 
R2 with the names of the components as used in the simulation you can see. And if we rearrange the equation, we arrive at a total current of IM times RM plus R2 divided by R2. And this gives us a current which is very close to the expected value within the inaccuracies of the measurement. And this means that the measurement is now only slightly distorted by the parallel connection of the 1 ohm resistor and the current meter when compared to the original measurement. In this video, I have shown you how to derive the equations for the current divider. We have used two relations for this, namely first Kirchhoff's first law, which we have already used to calculate the total resistance of parallel resistors in the last video, and secondly, the voltage equality of components sharing the same nodes in a network. And with the formulas from this video, you can infer from one partial current to the other partial current or to the total current, depending on the problem you want to solve. And I've also shown you in an experiment how you can reduce the measurement error in a current measurement with a low ohmic resistor such as this one here, and how you can then use the current divider rule to get from the current in the meter branch to the current in the main branch. And in exams, by the way, the current divider rule is often used to calculate unknown quantities in a network, if not all component values of a circuit are available, and you have to identify, let's say, a current which is missing somewhere. And by using a circuit simulation tool such as iCircuit, which is the tool which I am using, you can easily create your own exercises and then simply solve them with the solution already provided by the simulation to you. I will include the link to the iCircuit app in the video description down below. Just take a look at it if you want to. And as always, if you have any questions or requests for topics which I should cover here, just write me a comment and maybe I will make one of the next videos out of your idea. And if you like this video here, please consider subscribing to my channel. This will certainly keep me motivated to produce more videos such as this one here for you in the future. And finally, one last tip for you, you can download all my materials such as slides and circuit simulation files and such from my website at thefillersengineer.com. The link is coming up here in the back. That's it from me for now. Have fun and see you here next time on The Fearless Engineer.